Hello and welcome to the sixth video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own scary survival horror game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering the canvas and some UI. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel. And you'll find all the scripts and the assets that we use in this series there too, along with plenty of other things. And you can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So, the canvas and UI. UI elements are crucial to many, many games, whether it is a menu, whether it is uh, your on-screen display. Uh, but in terms of something that is first person, it's always good to see, uh, for example, your crosshairs, because they can be used to show you what can be picked up, for example. So, what do we do to get all this into place? Well, first we need to add a canvas, and that can be done automatically whenever we add any UI element. So let's go ahead and add a UI element. Let's go to game object, let's go to UI, and let's go to raw image. And you'll notice what this will do down here. It'll add a canvas, raw image, and an event system. We're not gonna go into too much detail just yet because it isn't relevant for what we're trying to do. There's no point in explaining things that we're going to use 10, 15 tutorials down the line when we can just do that as we get to it. For now, this raw image is going to be our crosshair. So we're gonna have two different types of crosshair. We're gonna have the standard one that we can see whenever we look around, and then we're gonna have another one which is gonna be a little bit different to indicate if we're passing over something that can be interacted with. So we'll call this non-interact cross. And if we double click it, you'll zoom way out and you'll see it right here. So what is this exactly? Well, this is quite literally a white square in the middle of our screen. If we go to our game view, you'll see it. Nope, this isn't a cube. That is literally the image we had just put there. So how do we make this into a crosshair? Well, there's a couple of things that we have to do before we can even get there. We need to first set up our canvas correctly. So on the canvas itself, you'll see a couple of different components. And the one we need to focus on more than anything is this canvas scaler. And what this will do is it will scale the canvas to fit any screen that this game is playing on. Whether it is a 1080p screen, whether it is 720, it'll scale everything that is involved with UI to the correct size. So if we change it from constant pixel size to scale with screen size, you'll see it does change ever so slightly. But now we need to set a standard resolution. You can see here it's preset to 800 by 600. That's far too small in this day and age. If you want to develop 4K, you could indeed set it at the 4K settings, but I think at the moment HD is still fairly standard. But even at a 4K screen, this will still scale because we're scaling it. So let's have this set as 1920 by 1080. And as you do that, you'll notice that the um, screen itself, you know, the, the little dot that we have, does change in size. <clears throat> like if we had that as 192, I think you could see it was, yeah, it looked a bit silly. So it is scaling in real time in the scene view. Next, we need to match the width and the height to be exact center. That means that everything will stay exactly how we need it to be. And that can either be set as zero or one, but like I say, we need it smack bang in the middle, so we're gonna have 0 0.5. And if we go to our game view now, you can see <clears throat> that it is indeed a little bit smaller. Still far too big for a crosshair though. So what can we do? Well, let's now change the size of it. Let's stay in our game view and let's change this size. We do need to make sure the anchor is set in the middle because this will always be in the middle. And what an anchor is, is it defines whereabouts on the screen. It always is by default. There are going to be other things like a health bar when we get to it that we will have um, in different anchor points. So this is already set to center, which is fine. But now we need to set the size of it. So 100 by 100 is far too big. I'm going to have this as like a little dot in the screen. If you played the demons inside that I linked in the pinned comment in the first tutorial, you'll know that it is indeed a little dot in the middle. So that is nice and simple. So let's have this as 10 by 10. And I think that looks okay, to be honest. Let me pull out the game view and let me expand it. Yeah, I, I think that should do the trick. Let's quickly press play and have a look how that looks. I don't want it to be 
too big, but I don't want it to be too small that it just isn't visible. So let me have a quick look in the game view and see how that looks. Are we happy with how big that looks? I think it might be a bit too big, but that's just that's just me. So I am going to reduce it. You can keep it at that size if you want to. Let's have it as five by five. There we go. I'm happy with that size. So now we need to create another one, which is going to be used whenever we pass over a door. So for example, if we're walking down the corridor and there's a door that we could interact with, try and open, we want the cursor to be bigger, you know, so as it can physically see if something can be interacted with. We'll also add some text elements in as well to kind of give more impact to say, oh yeah, you can interact with this object. So in order to do that, let's take our non-interact cross, hold control, press D. And what we'll do is change this to just interact cross. And there are different crosshairs that you could have. You could make this like a, a cross if you want. All you'd need to do is just change the size of this. So I'll tell you what, let's quickly do that just so you've got that knowledge uh, before we do anything else. Let me disable this interact cross. So you could have this non-interact cross uh, height of, let's say, 10. And then you can duplicate that and have the width as 10, but the height as 5. And you can see it is kind of a cross shape in the middle of the screen. And all you would need to do is just couple those together in a game object. So to do that, you would just create an empty object. You'd take both of those and place them inside. So that game object would now be your crosshair. So turning it on and off would turn both of those objects off. Like I said, I'm just going to keep mine as a dot just for now. There we go. Now, we did have uh, the interact cross. That was what we are working with. Let me get that back to a square. There we go. So this interact cross, I'm going to put back on, and I'm going to have this as 15 by 15. We may change this again a little later on, but you should be able to see that if we turn it on and off, it's quite visible that something is happening with our crosshair. So that would indicate that there is something in the game that we can pick up. So next, let's add some more. Let's add some text to this to give us a prompt. So for example, there's a door and we want to say open door. So what we can do is game object UI and we'll have text, text mesh pro. Uh, you may get this where you need to import the TMP essentials, hit that button. And all that will do is it will import everything necessary into Unity that you need to use TextMesh Pro. To give a bit of insight on what TextMesh Pro is, uh, in older versions of Unity, you would just use something called text. Um, in about four, maybe five years ago, Unity introduced TextMesh Pro, which is basically a more advanced version of text, and we can do different things with it and make it look even better. We'll get more into these deeper UI elements as and when we need them. So right now, we need this text to just say, open door. And this text will be dynamic. And what I mean by dynamic is if we have a door that we want to open, yep, we want it to display that. However, if we want to pick up an object, we need that to then say, pick up object. That's where programming comes into play. And we'll start programming in the next tutorial. So for now, let's just get this set up so as it looks OK for us. Open door, it looks a bit small. So let's go down here and let's change some of the settings in the component. So we are going to use fonts at some point as well, so we'll have a better looking font. Uh, but for now, we just need the font size to be a little bit bigger. So let's have this maybe as 60. And then we can expand this outwards so it all fits on one line, like so. Let's have a look in game. That should be OK. Uh, it's not in the right place, so let's move it with our rec tool. Uh, move it over somewhere here, maybe. Uh, that, nope, still not quite right. So round about there. You can see here there is your cursor. So it needs to be in relation to where your cursor is. So that probably should be okay there, I think, maybe. Maybe a bit more this way. And up a bit. Okay, so next thing we need to do is we need to have another one, and below that, that's going to be whatever key we're going to use and its action. So, for example, let's now bold this so it's a little bit better. 
Let's rename it to action, because that's going to be the action that we want to do. And then hold control, press D, and this will be a square bracket. We'll have E, because that'll be the open key, and we'll also say the word open. Uh, I'm going to unbold that, and I'm going to put it in. In fact, no, we'll keep it non-italic. We'll move it down. And we will put the original one as italic as well, because I want them to be kind of differentiated. So that is vaguely how it'll look. Let's pull that out of our screen. There we go. So it looks a little bit distorted, but don't worry. That's something that we will fix a little later on. We just need to get the basic elements of it there for now. Like I say, with coding and everything, it'll look a little bit better. Uh, but one thing you can try and do if yours does look not so great is this scale up here if you change that to one it will improve how things look in your game view and if it can't go down to one just click on free aspect untick low and there we go it'll look a little bit better so for all intents and purposes we have some simple ui in place now and yes i know it's not fantastic but again as i always say it's something we build upon and make it better and better as we go along so what we'll do is we'll change this one to say command. So what these two things mean is this is the action that we need to do whenever we pass over something that can be interacted with. And this is the command that we need to do it with. So both of those can now be turned off because we don't need them on screen. We just want our cursor on screen because we have nothing to interact with. That's something that we'll get round to in the next couple of tutorials as we build more and more. So next tutorial, what are we going to do? Well, do you remember I mentioned these here are going to be part of our first jump scare? Well, we're going to do some C-sharp programming to make them a bit more of a jump scare. That should be a lot of fun. C-sharp programming is always fun for me. Some people don't find it fun. They find it tricky, but don't worry. I will guide you through everything you need to know. So yep, next time, C-sharp programming. Remember to click the notification bell. Stay up to date with every tutorial. See you next time.